morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the um, Tree of Life Unitarian Universalist Congregation. My name's Chaplain Dave. Um, you can call me Chaplain Dave, or you can call me Pastor Dave, or you can just call me Dave. Um, any of those work. I use he, him pronouns. And uh, today is a joyful day. Look at how beautiful it is, it is outside. And uh, we have a lot going on today, including a welcome for our new members, which we're really excited about. And we will get to that in a little bit. Um, but it is so good to be together. It's so good to be together in this sacred time and this sacred space, to be together here in person, to be together with the folks that have joined us online, our community of communities, our community of ministry, this time to worship together. Today's service is grounded in the words of the Reverend Dr. Rebecca Parker, who invites us to remember that we can choose to bless the world, that we and our faith are called to bless the world. She writes, your gifts, whatever you discover them to be, can be used to bless or curse the world. The mind's power, the strength of the hands, the reaches of the heart, the gift of speaking, listening, imagining, seeing, waiting. Any of these can serve to feed the hungry, bind up wounds, welcome the stranger, praise what is sacred, do the work of justice or offer love. Any of these can also draw down the prison door, hoard bread, abandon the poor, obscure what is holy, comply with injustice, or withhold love. And so you must answer this question, what will you do with your gifts? Choose to bless the world. The choice to bless the world is more than an act of will, a moving forward into the world with the intention to do good. It is an act of recognition, a confession of surprise, a grateful acknowledgement that in the midst of a broken world, unspeakable beauty, grace, and mystery abide. There is an embrace of kindness that encompasses all of life, even yours. And while there is injustice, necessitation, or evil, there moves a holy disturbance, a benevolent rage, a revolutionary love, protesting, urging, insisting that that which is sacred will not be defiled. Those who bless the world live their life as a gesture of thanks for this beauty and for this rage. The choice to bless the world can take you into solitude to search for the sources of power and grace, native wisdom, healing, and liberation. But more, the choice will draw you into community, the endeavor shared, the heritage passed on, the companionship of struggle, the importance of keeping faith, the life of ritual and of praise, the comfort of human friendship, the company of earth, the chorus of life welcoming you. None of us alone can save the world. Together, that is another possibility waiting. So thank you, Rebecca Parker, for those inspiring words. And so on this day and this time, we do choose to bless the world. And today in celebration, we come together to welcome new members to our community. Their willingness to expand our hearts to receive them while also offering a glad affirmation of the joy within our community and the values of our faith. They choose to bless the world. Our communal journey is always unfolding 
And in learning the stories of others, we can find delight in how those stories become a part of our lives, our web of life, our tree of life. And so I welcome Judy to introduce us to our new members. My name is Judy Stetner, my pronouns are she, her, and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our newest members to you. And as I call your name, if you could come and stand up here with me, Michelle Dewey, um, pronoun she, her. You can just stand over here to this side. Michelle lives in uh, Fox Lake. Her family consists of her mom, two sisters, one brother, and various nieces and nephews. She first started attending Tree of Life when she moved to McHenry with her then partner, Rachel. Rachel was raised in, uh, uh, sorry, Michelle was raised in the Missouri Synod uh, Lutheran Church. In her 20s, Michelle earned her bachelor's degree in biblical studies. In the process, she ironically wound up being a secular humanist. <laughs> her workplace is Plexus Corporation in Buffalo Grove, where she works as a material handler in the packing department. Michelle enjoys drawing and reading. And next I'm going to call up Freddie Funnel. Freddie's pronouns are he, him, and lives in McHenry with his fiancée, Tiana, and their three cats. Freddie discovered Tree of Life through Woodstock Pride Fest and wanted to attend services to see if it would be a good fit. He had been looking for a UU congregation since he was a member of one back in Iowa. Freddie grew up attending Catholic and Baptist services, but they were not good fits. And when he discovered Unitarian Universalism, he knew he, found, he had finally belonged somewhere. Freddie works at, is it Cedal or Cedal? Cedal. Cedal, okay. At Cedal as a paraprofessional, currently with students who have autism. Freddie likes to travel whenever possible with some of his favorite places visited, being Auction, Germany, Dauphin Island, Alabama, and Ellie or Ely? Ely. Ely, thank you. Ely, Minnesota. Now, I'm going to have you guys standing for a while, so if anybody needs a chair, there's one there. <laughs> Next up is Jody McGovern. Jody's pronouns are she, her. She lives in Woodstock. Her family is her dad, Ed McGovern, and her sister, Heather McGovern. Jody wanted to be part of a church that respected all religions and beliefs. She attended Vacation Bible School growing up, but was never a member of a church before. Jody likes to make art with colored pencils and watercolor and is trying to learn to crochet. Next up is Alan Shear. Alan's pronouns are he, him. Alan married his high school sweetheart after a 20-year gap. <laughs> They'll celebrate their 20th anniversary next month. He has a son, a stepdaughter, and five grandchildren. He and Deirdre first started attending Tree of Life in October. It was love at first sight. <laughs> Alan's lifelong interest in religion and philosophy resulted in a Master's of Divinity degree in theology, a Master's of Art and PhD in philosophy. He was ordained in the United Presbyterian Church in 1981. He is a retired college professor, having taught a variety of history, religion, and philosophy courses. His spirituality is a mix of earth religions and humanism. He loves being outdoors and bird watching. Next up is the famous Deirdre Shear. <laughs> Deirdre's pronouns are she, her. She lives in McHenry with her husband, Alan. She's lived here for 40 years and grew up an hour away in Deerfield, Deerfield, Illinois. Sorry, Deerfield, Illinois. Deirdre has one, two wonderful stepchildren and five awesome grandkids. She retired a year ago and has been looking for a church community who shared her beliefs and where she felt welcome and at home. Deirdre grew up in the Presbyterian Church where she was active in the choir and youth group. As an adult, she became Catholic and was active in religious education and youth ministry, where she organized mission trips and was on the parish council. Alan and Deirdre loved to travel. They got engaged in Paris, married on a beach in Belize, and travel as often as they can. 
Next is Gloria Walsh. Gloria's pronouns are they, them. They live in Trout Valley, Illinois. Gloria lives with their husband and has five stepchildren and 10 grandchildren and many unofficially adopted children who have emigrated to the U.S. Gloria was a member of Prairie Circle UU for about four years until they moved here uh, from Mundelein to Trout Valley. They visited three UU congregations within 30 minutes of their new home and decided that Tree of Life was the best fit. When tree, yeah, go team. <laughs> when Tree of Life partnered with Prairie Circle to share a minister, it reinforced that they had made the right decision. From childhood until Gloria moved as a young adult, they attended St. Paul United Church of Christ in Palatine. Gloria is also a traveler. They just returned from Argentina and a cruise to Antarctica. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but Gloria's passion is volunteering with immigrants, mostly in the Chicago area and Wisconsin. And last, I want to call up Julie Zurich. Julie's pronouns are she, her. She lives in McHenry. She is a licensed massage, massage therapist and Reiki energy healing facilitator. Julie's talents are massage, compassionate touch and teaching, which she currently uses as an end-of-life doula. Her interests and hobbies are massage, healing for health, mentally, physically, and emotionally, reading, astrology and numerology, Wicca, Native American spirituality, and watching Jeopardy. <laughs> And delightfully for us, going out to breakfast with the Tree of Life group on Saturday mornings. Please join me in welcoming our new members and make sure to greet them after the service. a gift bag and a membership certificate for each of you, so please stay up here, and Dave is also going to lead us in our covenant. <laughs> oh, sorry. Thank you all for joining us. We were so happy to have you. Um, we have a short ceremony. Um, it's a, a covenant. There's a couple parts. There are some things I'm going to ask you to affirm and say that you will too. Some things I'll ask the congregation to affirm, and some things that we'll all oh, that we'll all say together. Um, a reminder that a, a covenant, a covenant is a sacred promise. It's a sacred promise that we make together for the way we want to be together in order to make the world a better place. I'm going to ask the congregation, if you're willing and able, to stand. In this community, we are called to a journey together to seek meaning and to grow as a force of love in the world. The strengthening force behind our community is a promise, both spoken and unspoken, that in love we are here for each other. As a spoken promise, we share the words of covenant. For the new members, it is with great joy that we celebrate your being here today. We are so glad that you've chosen to join our community as part of your journey. Will you accept our gifts of openness, fellowship, and service? Will you offer us your unique presence and gifts? Will you join our endeavors to create a community and a world of love and understanding 
And if so, please answer by saying, we will. We will. To the congregation, will you welcome these new members with kindness and with generosity, seeking to show them the warmth of fellowship and the embrace of community? Will you add to your strengths and talents to the new gifts they bring to us? Will you renew your commitment to share the challenges and successes as our community grows and changes? If so, please answer by saying, we will. We will. And in spiritual covenant, we will all say the words that you see on the screen. Let's say those together. We believe loving acceptance is the spirit of our community. We understand that serving that love guides our lives and shapes our journeys. We affirm our commitment to one another to seek meaning in life and to grow together in joy. Amen. Okay, stay for just a little bit longer. We are going to sing together hymn number 402 from You I Receive. We're going to sing it through twice. The words will be on the screen, but as we sing it, I'm going to invite you to sing it to our new members. So whenever you're ready, Cameron. You I receive, to you I give. So I have a story today, a story I shared last year about this time. It's called Sustaining the Tree of Life. The tree stood in the middle of the village. Its trunk was so large that it took six people holding hands to reach around it. The roots were strong and wide, and its branches spread out over the village square, offering shelter from the rain or shade from the summer sun. Its fruit was juicy, sweet, and plentiful. The people of the village loved the tree. Children played beneath it and climbed its lowest branches. Young people knew that if you whispered your dreams to the tree, they were more likely to come true. People who proclaimed their love or friendship for one another beneath its branches found the relationships to be nourishing. And elders discovered their sweetest memories could be counted on when they were near the great tree. The tree had witnessed so very much. And when the breezes blew through the trees, one could hear echoes of generations, laughter, conversation, dreams, prayers, and songs. Animals loved the tree too. Rabbits lived in burrows under the roots, squirrels and monkeys lived in the branches, and bats and birds flew to eat the abundant fruit. The tree seemed to buzz with life. One day, a traveling merchant arrived in the village. He rested in the shade and ate two pieces of delicious fruit. This fruit is incredible, he said. I would like to have some to sell in the next villages that I visit. Who owns this tree? No one owns this tree, replied a villager. If anything, we belong to it. Well then, if no one owns the tree, then no one will mind if I pick the fruit, said the merchant and began to fill a basket. I mind, said the villager, and today I am the keeper of the tree. What do you mean, keeper of the tree? We each take our turn here with the tree. We can never own it. We are just here as protectors, as sustainers. 
That's ridiculous. This tree doesn't need you. You could just take what you need. Take what you want. The tree will continue. But the villager couldn't be persuaded. Sir, this tree isn't like that. We don't come here to take from it, even though we receive much. We are keepers of the tree because this is where we are nourished. This is where some of our most precious memories are and where our people have dreamed. This is where we remember who we want to become. Well, said the merchant, you may think this tree is special, but it still doesn't need you to sit with it. That's preposterous. Ah, replied the villager, the tree itself may not need me, but what of others who come by? Just this morning, I sat with a woman whose heart was heavy with worry. Had I not been here, she would have had to carry that weight alone. And this afternoon, a tired couple came by, and they rested with me. They said they had been looking for a place like this. And then an elder came by, and we watched the birds and the branches together. And now you're here. You were confused about what this tree is and how to be with it. Imagine if you had arrived and not found anyone here to talk with. You might have continued thinking that everything you do is all about you. Luckily for you, my friend, I'm here to let you know that when you care for the tree of life, it becomes about so much more than just you. And the merchant sat for a while in the shade, thinking about these ideas that felt new and a little challenging. As the sun went down, he picked up his bag and headed out of town, whistling a song he hadn't thought about in years. On his way, he shared a smile with each person he met, his heart feeling strangely light and joyful. And the people of the village? They continued to sustain the tree of life, to care for one another, and to share their gifts with grace and gratitude. May it be so for each of us. Thank you, Judy. Together, together we are keepers of the tree of life. Each of us individually, together as a community, we are keepers of the tree of life. With our gifts, we choose to bless the world. From you, I receive. For some of us, that can be the hard part to allow ourselves to receive, to believe that we ourselves are worthy of receiving, that we are worthy of love, or that we ourselves need help or need assistance. We can sometimes believe, erroneously believe, that receiving help is somehow a weakness or a failing. We like to give, though. That, that makes us feel good. Receiving, we don't like to ask for help. But today we sing and we remind ourselves that from you I receive and to you I give. Together we share and from this we live. I believe we need places in our life where we can practice this. And I believe that church is one place where we can do that practice. It's kind of the core of what we do. I think some of you have heard me say before that one of my favorite quotes about church is that church is a place where you get to practice what it means to be human. It was said by James Luther Adams, a historical figure from our faith, um, somebody worth reading and someone worth getting to know. That church is a place where you get to practice what it means to be human. It's a place where we can choose to bless the world. 
Our reading this morning from Rebecca Parker asks us, what will you do with your gifts? And she answers, choose to bless the world. Choose to bless the world. And she reminds us that choosing to bless the world will draw us into community. The endeavor shared, she writes, the heritage passed on, the companionship of struggle, the importance of keeping faith, the life of ritual and of praise, the comfort of human friendship, the company of the earth, the chorus of life welcoming you. And she concludes, none of us can save the world alone. Together, that is another possibility, waiting. None of us can save the world alone, but together, that's another possibility, just waiting. So together, we choose to bless the world. That's what brings us together on a Sunday morning, whether it's here in person or whether it's online, the possibility of what we can create together, not only here in this building, but what we do together in the wider world what we do together in the wider tree of life. And just as it can be challenging for us as individuals to ask one another for assistance and for help, sometimes it can be challenging for us to talk about the reality that this community also needs our help and needs your help. The gifts that this church provides and can provide are your gifts. The gifts of this community are your gifts. Our gifts, the gifts of the Tree of Life Unitarian Universalist Congregation are the gifts that we all share. Whether those are the gifts of our time or the gifts of very real financial support that's needed for us to do our shared work in the world to bring the words of our mission into shared action through our services, through our programs, through our ministries, through our community partnerships. We nurture a community that welcomes diversity. We nurture a community that supports the spiritual growth of its members. We nurture a community that acts to create a more just society. So today, this Sunday, we launch our annual pledge drive, one of the ways in which we nurture this community through our shared gifts. Our gifts are what we share. And so at this time, I invite Judy back to the podium for the official launch of the Tree of Life UU Congregation's 2024 pledge drive for support. Thank you, Dave, for those inspiring words. We all have an opportunity to put Dave's words into action here within our Tree of Life community. For the next month, we will be collecting pledges for our next church year. Later today, many of you will receive an email um, with a pledge packet, um, and I also have paper pledge packets to hand out, and for everybody that's here today, please see me after the service and save us some postage and pick up your packet. Um, to kick off this pledge drive, um, I have a video for, to share with you. Its quality is not great. Please bear with it. <laughs> it's not a Ryan Broussard production. I apologize. <laughs> with a location that's over in Gray's Lake. It's unique, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm glad they found someone. I wonder how inclusive this place is. I'm just not connecting with my regular, my regular hangout. I don't think I've seen the same values as me. I'm looking for a menu that has all kinds of things. Well, 
This menu looks pretty good, doesn't it? Why don't we go in and try it Let's out? Let's give it a try. Okay. Hi. Good Hi. Welcome to Tree of Life. We're so glad you're here. How many for today? Two, please. All right, right this way. Wow. Look at this. Look at this gorgeous rotunda. That's really pretty, isn't it? I, I just love how everyone greets us when we come in. of life. Here we're Unitarian Universalists and we nurture a community that welcomes diversity, supports the spiritual growth of its members, and acts to create a more just society. Can I get you anything today? Well, I don't know. This menu is pretty overwhelming. I see so many options. Look, there's all sorts of upcoming events. I like the more traditional menu. What do you have for me today? Oh, we have great music. Our choir sings like angels, and we're supported by wonderful musicians. Sometimes we even have poetry readings. We also have programs before and after service, so you can explore what faith means to you. Huh. I'm, I'm more interested in social justice. What do you have in that area? Well, you've come to the right place. We participate and give through Second Sunday offerings to many different social service organizations, and we have many volunteer opportunities as well from compassion for campers, jailbreakers, get out of the vote, advocacy for justice, and community partnerships with environmental defenders. We have something for everyone. Wow. We're both intrigued. Can you tell us about the kids' menu? Oh, yes. Well, we, we value our children and youth here at Tree of Life. And we even offer sexuality education. It's called our whole lives, or we call it OWL, for our youth and even for our surrounding community. We have social events that integrate both young and old, and we're supporting and affirming church for our LGBTQ plus youth and community. Huh. Wow, I, I see also you have social occasions like bingo nights and Dungeons and Dragons and potlucks. I, I think I'll have a little of that, please. I also like those chalice circles. I'm really big on um, communicating and talking about what my faith means to me. Uh, I, I like to go on my own personal path. Oh, oh, excellent choices, excellent choices. We even have New Year's, Mardi Gras, summer solstice, and winter holiday celebrations. We really have something for everyone, and we welcome all faiths. You know, we are a community of open-minded and open-hearted people who comfort and support each other in trying times, make space for living with joy, and keep growing together in the ways we bring more love and more justice into our world. That sounds great. And I see here that you've been in McHenry County for 150 years. Wow, and this is a really cool building. You've got lots of space for church activities here. I, I do, I really love it here. And I don't think I would wanna be anywhere else. I'll bring out your choices. I'm really so glad that you both found your way here and are feeling well fed. We really create our, our menu and our meals together. And we really love it when people contribute to our community. And we'd also love it if you could help it out, us out financially. Um, that's the way that we continue to grow our menu and grow our impact. Here, let me leave these pledge forms with you. All right. Here, just hang on a minute. I'd be glad to make a monthly donation. You can take this. And I'm already a member, but you really made me realize uh, how much Tree of Life inspires my living of daily life. I even found out some things I wasn't aware of. So why don't you put a nice tip on my pledge? That sounds great. And you can just go ahead and use our Breeze website if you'd like. Yeah, right. Right sure. There. What a great idea. I will go ahead and do that right away, go into Breeze. And uh, I just want to be sure that I've raised it enough and that you know you can count on my pledge for the upcoming year. 
I can't wait to see you all next Sunday too. And me too. I'll be here. Oh, I'm really so looking good. forward to yeah, it. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. And come back again, please do. And tell all your friends about Tree of Life too. And don't forget to make your pledges today to support our amazing community and to help Tree of Life become a liberal oasis in McHenry County for the next 150 years. I hope you enjoyed our little skit. Big thanks go to Jess Miller for providing the script. Uh, and it is, uh, a Tree of Life has been around for a long time indeed and is grounded with deep roots. Fed by the groundwaters of our values and support, I believe we'll be around for many more generations. That support is centrally, certainly needed financially. And I hope everyone that sees value in our presence here in McHenry County will dig deep and make a financial pledge, a promise or intention to contribute an amount that reflects your commitment. We are driven forward by your volunteer efforts. I'm asking you today to recommit to your time to Tree of Life. On each chair as you came in, you found a green sheet of paper um, with lots of opportunities to give of your energy and passion. Please think of what you're willing to try in the next year. Fill in the circles and return your page. This is, we're calling it a commitment card, even though it's a flimsy sheet of paper. Uh, return your, your commitment card um, to the colorful box that you'll find out there in the social area by our pledge tree. There are pens by the box um, if you need one. You can also return your pledge card to that box. And for those of us who are joining us online, the commitment page, the commitment card, and the pledge card will be included in the email that is sent out today as an online form. In the weeks that come, you will notice leaves being added to our pledge trees tree out there in the social room. Oh, thank you, Heather. Yes, please bring that in. I think it'll help to see. And big thanks to Heather. She found this. Uh, for this tree for free. <laughs> there we go. Uh, in the weeks to come, you'll notice leaves being added to our pledge tree. Um, each leaf represents a pledge made by one of you. You'll also see the trunk turn blue as your financial pledges or your groundwater accumulate and transpire to help us reach our lofty pledge goal of $180,000 which will fund our needs and aspirations all the way up to our highest branches, transforming our tree of life into a mighty beauty. Truly, may it be so. May we be the ones to make it so.